I'm going to go through the uh, answers to the unit practice test here for uh, unit 5. The first one says a 1 liter solution prepared by combining 0 0.02 moles of HNO2 and 0 0.016 moles of KOH. So the important here, uh, important thing is, you know, how much of each of these two are we going? So we have a little bit less base than we have of our weak acid. So which uh, shows the relationship of the concentrations. So to think about this, and I went through and thought of the, looked at the uh, uh, amounts of chemicals I have here. So I've got my HNO2 and KOH. Okay, I put in my moles. And what happens, we can see that we're going to use up all of our KOH. So none of that's going to exist. Um, but I will have some HNO2, you know, left over. And I'm going to be forming my uh, KNO2, which I know is going to break up into ions. Okay, so I have quite a bit of my K plus and my NO2 minus, but I do know that my NO2 minus is going to continue to break up as it reacts with the water and form a little bit of HNO2 and a little bit of OH minus. So from this, I can say, well, I know I'm going to have the most is of my K plus because that's just going to be from dissolving. So it's either going to be answer B or answer C. I can eliminate A and D. I'm sorry, D is okay. And then I'm going to say, um, what I have left here is I'm going to have quite a bit of my NO2, okay? Because, you know, here I have 0.16 moles of that. And uh, if I were just starting with a HNO2 solution, I wouldn't have very much NO2. But I do have quite a bit of my NO2 uh, in solution. And a little bit of that's going to break up. So I'm going to have a small amount of HNO2 formed and a small amount from the beginning. So I have more uh, NO2 minus. And then I'm going to have HNO2. And last of all, I'm going to have some OH. Okay, so I think that looks to me like um, answer B. No, that's not right. That would be answer C. Okay, I'm going to back up here. Okay, I just said I'm going to have a lot of the NO2 minus and a little bit of HNO2, a little bit of OH. That's answer D. Okay, not a very good start. Here we go on. Question two. We have a 0.3, a 3 liter solution containing 0.8 moles of weak acid. Which of the following species is in the greatest concentration after we add 0.8 moles of base? So I have the same amount of my acid as I have my base. So when I mix those two things together, they're going to completely react, so there'll be none of this left over. I'm going to have water, I'm going to have a lot of sodium, and I'm going to have quite a bit of a uh, a minus. Now this A minus will continue to react with the water. I'll get a little bit of HA, a little bit of hydroxide. So uh, who do I have uh, the most of of my choices? Okay, of these choices, I'm going to have the most A minus. So that'll be my answer for this. Um, very, very, very little H plus because it's going to be a basic solution. And there's a tiny bit of HA and a tiny bit of OH minus, but those are not uh, what I have most of. So A minus. For question three, I have two solutions, solution A and solution B, and they both have a pH of four. That means they're both going to have a certain number of uh, H plus ions floating around in there, okay? But the H plus ions I get from HCl are because HCl totally breaks up. So I'm going to have a certain number of H pluses and a certain number of Cl minuses. But in my HNO2, I'm going to get the same number of H pluses but that's only a few of what I have. I have a lot of H pluses. I'm going to have a um, few NO2 minuses. But mostly I'm going to have a lot of HNO2. So this solution is going to have NO2, HNO2s, HNO2s, HNO2s. You know, it's going to be a lot. You have to have a lot of this acid in order to get uh, a few H pluses. I just have to have a little bit of this acid to get that same number of H pluses. So what are my answers here? Which solution requires more moles of KOH to reach the equivalence point? Well, this one is the one that needs a lot of KOH because I'm going to have a lot of uh, HNO2 that's sitting in my solution that has not dissociated yet. So uh, that is answer B, solution B, because it has undissociated HNO2 molecules that can be neutralized. When I get to question four, a 0.05 moles of NaOH is added to 0.1 moles of an unknown weak acid. 
okay, the pH is found to be 4.2. So we should notice here that what I've got is I have a, a strong base, and I have twice as much of that weak acid. So that means I'm going to have a, a ba an acid like HA. I'm going to add some OH- minus to it, and that's going to neutralize some of my HA and turn it into water and A-. minus. So I'm going to have half of my HA left over and half of it turned into A-. minus Equal amounts, I have just created a buffer. And not only a buffer, I have the buffer where these two are equal, so they are going to cancel out of my Ka expression. So I find out that the Ka equals uh, the pH, or the, no, the H Ka equals the H plus concentration, the pH equals the pKa. So here are my Ka's. I need to find out which one is going to have a pKa of 4.2. So I can uh, go back and take each one of these and take the negative log of those. Okay, or I could work backwards, but I can see right away it's going to be this one because what I have, this is going to be between 4 and 5. This pKa will be between 1 and 2, between 3 and 4, between 7 and 8. So without anything else, I just know it's going to be my benzoic acid somewhere between 4 and 5. When I get to question 5, okay, I have a 5 milliliter uh, sample of a strong acid, 0 0.8, uh, 0.1 molar HCl. And how many milliliters of my base, strong base, do I need to uh, uh, prepare a solution with a pH of 7? Now, this is the clue, okay? If I have a pH of 7, then that means I have a neutral solution, neutralized. Neutralized from a strong acid and a strong base. So that means I have exactly neutralized. So I have the same number of moles of acid as I have base. Well, we can kind of do a little logic here and say, if I have a 0.1 molar HCl and 0.25 molar NaOH, my base is two and a half times as strong, so I'm only going to need one 2.5 of 5 milliliters. So if I take 5 milliliters divided by 2.5, I'm going to get 2 milliliters, and that's my answer here. I can also do this with stoichiometry, and start if I have 5 milliliters, change it to liters. And if I use my molarity as a conversion factor of HCl, then that will give me moles of HCl. And because I know that one mole is going to go with uh, one mole of NaOH and one mole of HCl are going to react, then I get the moles of NaOH. I use molarity of my NaOH here, and that will give me liters, which I change into milliliters. And when I get all done, that's going to be two milliliters. So I get the same answer by stoichiometry or just a little bit by logic. Okay, number six. If I have a 10 milliliter sample of acid was obtained in the Erlenmeyer, after adding 15 milliliters of distilled water, it was titrated to its endpoint with KOH. So we add KOH in the, in the, from a burette, and the following data is obtained. The concentration of my KOH is 0.1 molar. So what's happening here? I'm going to go, it starts at 5 milliliters, goes down to 45 milliliters. That means I have used 40 milliliters of my potassium hydroxide. And I can see what's happening here is that I had a 10 milliliter sample of my acid, and I had to use 40 milliliters of my base. So if I had to use four times as much base, then that means my uh, acid must be four times more concentrated than my base. So if my base is 0.1 molar, my acid must be 0.4 molar. And we can also uh, do this as a stoichiometry problem. Question 7. Consider the amino acid spartic acid. Its protonated and deprotonated forms can be represented by the following equilibrium. So it is an acid. It can lose an H+, plus and it can gain an H+. Plus, and we have this equilibrium. And the pKa for this equilibrium is 3.65. Now, what's special about pKa is that's going to be the pH at which this concentration and this concentration are equal to each other. Okay, and again, if I write out the Ka expression, those two are equal. They eliminate the H plus equals the Ka, the pH equals the pKa. So these two are going to be uh, equal at 3.65 pH. Now, the question is, in a particular aqueous solution that has a pH of 5, so how do the concentrations between the four, uh, two forms compare in this environment? So what I want to do is take this 5, and I want to compare it to the 3.65.
So 3.65 is mean when these two are equal. Is it 5? Is it more basic? Is it more acidic than 3.65? I don't care whether the solution is acidic or basic. I want to know how does it compare to 3.65. And 5 is larger, so 5 is more basic. That means I have a greater amount of my conjugate base than I do of my acid. So I'm looking for an answer where uh, C4H6NO4 minus is greater than HC4H6NO4. And that looks like this answer right here, answer C. Okay, and question number eight, you tell us that the pKa of a weak acid is 3.50. Now what's so special about pKa of a weak acid? That is the best buffer that you can make, and that would be the buffer where the acid and its conjugate base are in the same concentration. So which of the following can prepare a buffer solution with a pH of 4.5? Okay, so I need this to be more basic. That means I'm going to need more of my A- minus than I have of my HA. And so let's look at our answer. So uh, what if the concentration of HA is 0 0.01 and A is 0 0.01? We can eliminate that. Those are equal, and for that one, the pH would end up being 3.5. Here I have HA is 0 0.01 and A is 1. Okay, that sounds like a reasonable answer. We'll come back. HA is 0 0.1, A minus is 0 0.01. Okay, so there I have my uh, HA is greater, so that's not a good answer. And for letter D, 0 0.1 and 0 0.1, they're both the same. Okay, so it has to be answer B. That's the only one where my A minus concentration is greater than my HA. Now notice, if you look at it, this is 0.1 and this is 0 0.01. So the ratio of those two, okay, the A minus over the HA, that is 10 to 1. And that makes sense because the uh, if we go back to the Henderson-Hesselbach equation, okay, the pH equals the pKa plus the log of this ratio, and the log of 10, Okay, 10 to the first power, the log of that is 1, and so if I take my pKa, which is 3.5, add 1, then I get 4.5. That's answer 8. Okay, number 9. Here we have a uh, solution. We're doing a titration. 5 milliliter sample of 0.2 molar weak acid, and we're titrating with a strong base, KOH, and uh, the curve, pH curve, is obtained and shown. So we can see it's starting here, here's my equivalence point, here's halfway to my equivalence point. Okay, so which of the following would be changed if 50 milliliter sample were used? Okay, as we're saying we had a 5 milliliter sample, what if we use 50 milliliter? Okay, so A, it would require a greater volume of KOH to change from the pH at point W to the pH at point Y. Okay, if I had a, a more uh, chemical, if I had more of my acid, then the same basic re reaction would happen, but it would happen over a longer period. So I would have to, you know, go over and over and over and over and over. Okay, we're talking about this being 10 times more chemical, so it's going to take 10 times longer to get there. And so, yes, you know, my W would end up here, my Y would end up here. Okay, it would be, it would take more. This is true. Answer A, okay, it would take more KOH to go from W to Y. Let's check the others. It would require a smaller volume of KOH to reach the equivalence point. No, it's going to take a lot longer to reach the equivalence point because I have a lot more of my acid, so that's no good. The pH at the equivalence point would be higher. No, we would still have the same concentration of our um, conjugate base. We would still end up with the same pH at the equivalence point. And the pH at the halfway point would be higher. No, that's going to be the same. In fact, that is the pKa. So it's going to be the same either way. So only answer A is good on that one. Okay, question 10. Sulfurous acid. Okay, now it's a diprotic acid. It has two Ks. So Ka1 and it has a Ka2. So what is true of this solution at pH of 7? Okay, well, that's an actually a pretty special place. Okay, that's the pKa2. So at the pKa1, that's where we have pulled off one of uh, these two protons. So we're going to have equal amounts of H2SO3 and HSO3 minus. 
But when you get to pKa2, that's where we've been able to pull off. Uh, you know, we're working on pulling off the second um, proton. So I think I said this wrong. So the pKa1 is halfway to the first equivalence point where these two are equal. When I get to pKa2, that's halfway to the second equivalence point. And at that point, half of it is still HSO3 minus, and now half of it is SO3 2 minus. So we are looking for a situation at pKa2, which is, you know, the, the log of 1 times 10 to minus 7, which is pH of 7, then these two are equal. And the concentrations of this and this are approximately equal. That is the answer, answer B. And that's the multiple choice portion of this test.